Now it's time for Perspective on the programme, and my guest today has been listed as one of the 100 most influential global thinkers. His popular science book, Seven Brief Lessons on Physics, has been translated into a massive 41 languages and has sold over a million copies worldwide. Now, he is a uh, theoretical physicist with his uh, work, for example, in the field of quantum gravity. His latest book, The Order of Time, he tackles the origins of time itself. Well, Carlo Rovelli joins me now. Thanks very much for being with us on the programme. Let's talk, first of all, uh, about um, the, uh, your latest, if you like, the order of time first. I'm told in reading it you'll never look at a clock again uh, the same way, and that uh, you ask the question, does time even exist? <laughs> well, thank you for having me here. Yes, time exists for us, of course. I mean, I don't know how much time we have for this short chat together. We cannot stretch it to more um, than this. Uh, but time does not exist at the fundamental level. Time is an approximation that we use to discuss the world. So um, time, it's like up and down, which are good for us on Earth and make no sense outside the Earth. This is a main message of the book. Time is more complicated than what we think. So how does that work? I mean, for example, just thinking about myself, I mean, I know that roughly 40 years plus ago I was uh, at school. That didn't happen yesterday. I mean, doesn't is, everyone's used, aren't they, to thinking of time as a river that has a starting point and an end point? It works at various levels. This is a simple example. Um, if you... Um, move fast, uh, time goes slower to you. This means that uh, if you make a, a rapid uh, trip uh, and you come back, you have lived less than whoever remained uh, still. If you have a child, you might um, go for a long trip, come back and find your child who has grown older than you. Um, so uh, time doesn't pass for us all the same way. And the most shocking um, effect for me is the one with altitude. Time literally passes uh, um, slower at uh, uh, lower altitude and higher at higher altitude, faster at higher altitude. So if you, um, if you take two clocks and move them a little bit far apart like that and then come back, after a while, um, one of the two clocks is ahead and one of the two clocks is back. This one is ahead. Of course, it's very small, um, this effect. We don't see it in everyday life because it's small, um, <clears throat> but it's real. And today we have good clocks that can measure it. So um, your uh, head lives a little bit longer than your feet unless you stay upside down all the time. <laughs> it's a, you've got an amazing way of explaining people that makes it nice and visual as well. I mean, how do you do that? How do you manage to take ordinary people uh, like myself, who perhaps doesn't understand, you know, the inner workings of quantum physics or whatever, uh, to, 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 to appreciate what you're saying and understand it? Um, I started writing for the large public very late, and it came up uh, uh, a little bit by chance. I was writing for an Italian newspaper short article, so that developed in a book. Um, I try to, um, let me put it this way, popular science books usually are written for people who are passionate about science. So they're full of details. They tell a lot of stories, a lot of um, facts, a lot of things. And this is very good for um, the, um, I don't know, a young kid who is passionate about physics and know anything about, about it. My books are very different. They're written for people who know nothing about science. And uh, try, I try just to go to the simple core of the story. Um, any scientific theory, you can just summarize in a few words, and I try to do that. Of course, it's not always easy. Sometimes it's complicated. But, um, it's complicated because we don't understand well things. One, once you understand something very well, you can synthesize enormously. For instance, Copernicus made a huge revolution in the Renaissance, but after all, the only thing he understood is that the Earth rotates and goes around the Sun. And now we know that, and we can say in a few words. And I think it's the same for Einstein, or for quantum mechanics, or for quantum gravity. The moment we understand things all the way through, we should be able to communicate it simply. And where does this come from in you? I mean, I, know, uh, I was reading that you put some of it down to LSD. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it came from, it came in me because um, um, I had an education which is not, was not just scientific. 
Uh, I had an education which is largely in, in the classics. I read a lot. Um, I read an enormous amount of literature in my life. So I sort of uh, spent my life uh, in large part in the, in the natural sciences, but in a good part also in, uh, in the humanities. Uh, um, I, 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 I write um, articles in philosophy. I teach history of science. Uh, so I try to mediate between a purely scientific world and a um, humanity uh, world. And I had a rebellious youth. I took LSD. I was a little bit of a hippie. And um, that, I think, helped to give a wider um, perspective, um, if I may say, on, 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 on reality, on the world, on, on, on people. Um, that maybe differentiated me uh, a little bit from many scientists who were very much focused uh, on what they're doing. doesn't mean it makes me a better scientist, but it helps in communicating with people. And when you're theorising and coming up with um, ideas and thoughts, how do you know you're right, or do, or do you not? Oh, I don't, of course. I mean, um, doing science is like uh, uh, being blind and walking in a, in, in a room. You just touch, try, uh, you hit your head, you do mistakes. Uh, science is a long sequence of mistakes because it goes by trial and error. There is no... Mm, rational, perfect uh, path to discovery. Uh, we have problems, we are confused. Uh, that's what's be the beauty of science. We are at the border of what we know, of knowledge, and we try to step into the dark, into the unknown. Uh, and of course, in doing that, many times it doesn't work. Sometimes you hit something, it works, and you know it works only sometimes much later because you make an experiment and it confirms a theory. If you want Einstein, great theories, Einstein wrote his major theory 100 years ago, and only now we are checking how much he was right. Um, it would be good for him to be still alive and be happy for that, but uh, um, uh, he isn't, of course. So some of the science that I do uh, might turn out to be right, I hope so, uh, or might turn out to be wrong. And, uh, well, that's good. Somebody else will go ahead. And just um, briefly to end on, your first uh, big book was Seven Brief Lessons on Physics. I mean, there you write on all sorts of things, black holes being one of them. I mean, is, was that your, your big major, major passion, if you like, to get that book out there? Um, I did not expect such a huge, uh, a huge success of the book. Um, the book was written a little bit by chance. Um, I think the book um, hits people uh, not only because there is an explanation of science, but also because uh, I try to connect science to our um, life, uh, emotional life, and our human concerns. I think the, the picture we should have about the world is, is, is one, is, is united. There isn't a technical cold science on one hand and our emotions, um, our questions about ourselves, who, are, who we are as human beings, separate. And so the book tries to give a, an overall picture. The last chapter of the book um, is about us. Who are us, human beings? What it means to be, uh, to have a soul, to think, to have emotions uh, in, a, in, in a universe which is made by atoms. Um, and I try to pull things together, and I think that is the reason people reacted to that. People could uh, connect to the, to the scientific world. Great to have you with us on the programme today. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today on the programme. That's Carlo uh, Ravelli, listed as uh, one of the most 100 most influential global thinkers with today's perspective.